Incredibles 2 was the sequel we wanted, but had to wait 14 years for. When it finally did arrive, it made us realize that we should have just moved on from the original instead of waiting for a worthy follow-up, because it never came. Here's some reasons why. Number 1. Political undertones. For an animated film, it has a surprising level of feminism being shoved into the viewer's face. Right from the start, we see Violet's boyfriend saying he likes powerful women because he's so secure in his masculinity. Elastigirl is portrayed as the more competent superhero over Mr. Incredible and gets chosen to be the new face of the superhero resurgence, while Mr. Incredible gets to be the stay-at-home dad and, not surprisingly, shows how poorly he handles his household duties. Then, we're introduced to a major company run by two siblings, with the brains behind the operation being, of course, the woman. The parents of the two siblings had died because the father was an idiot and didn't listen to his wife. I think you're getting the picture. Violet does get some character development as she matures and begins to understand the world and her powers, but Mr. Incredible and Dash have no other purpose than just being cheap comic relief. The film has a pretty blatant men are inferior to women message, which is pretty ironic for a film released before Father's Day. I'm all for equality, but that's just it. There's none to be found here. Empowering women doesn't have to be at the expense of men. You can have both male and female characters kicking ass on the same level. For example, in the first movie, Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible were equals. They complemented each other with their strengths and weaknesses. Their relationship was fun to watch against the backdrop of the superpowered family dynamic. Unfortunately, this equal partnership gets tossed out for a beatdown on masculinity. Number 2. The movie lacks in depth. The story in Incredibles 2 is weak and forgettable. The film also doesn't have any serious stakes on the line. It's a lackluster villain at the end with some cheap jokes along the way. The first film dealt with complex and emotional issues like the public lawsuits against superheroes, a theme which they could have expounded on here. Or maybe the theme on whether we are really special if all of us are unique, just like how no one is super if everyone is. Or the realistic dialogue we saw in Bob and Helen's argument when he comes home late from his vigilante adventures. Or even when Helen suspects that Bob might be having an affair when she finds a white hair on his suit. Perhaps the desperation Mr. Incredible's face had when he believed his family had been killed. Any one of those scenes is more emotional and complex than what we got in the sequel. All we had was Elastigirl going solo on her missions while we watched boring suburban babysitting mixed with superpowers. Number 3. The plot is predictable. I'm sure most of you saw it coming that it was the evil sister all along. The reveal of the villain was cliche and felt like something you'd see on a TV series, not a big budget movie. Number 4. The missing family dynamic. In the sequel, Elastigirl goes off to do her own thing while the rest of the family just stays home. And for most of the film, the family doesn't have much interesting interaction. Elastigirl then gets captured, and Mr. Incredible goes off to save her, leaving the kids behind. It would have been more fun to see more of the entire family having to work together like they did in the first movie, but we only had a small taste of that at the very end. Number 5 is Jack-Jack. I got annoyed by this character. Jack-Jack is just there for comic relief and doesn't add anything to the overall story arc. Every minute of his screen presence takes away time from another character's development. He's a baby, and he's got nearly limitless superpowers without any ability to control them, and his powers seem to be a blank check. He can conveniently do whatever the script requires him to do. It's unlikely there will be another sequel after this one, but if there is, I sure hope he's grown up by then. So what do you folks think? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.